In this video, we're going to illustrate the design of a program using the ideas in How to Design Programs, second edition. In particular, we're going to follow the design recipe illustrated in chapter two of How to Design Programs, second edition, which is a six step process by which one can go about the design of functions in Racket. And it maps similarly to the design of programs in any programming language. Now in the book, the six steps are spread out uh, through the use of examples and other things. So I'm actually going to replace the book with this uh, boiled down version. So step one, we're going to articulate how, do we, how we wish to represent information as data. Step two, we'll write down the signature, purpose statement, and header for the function. Step three, we'll illustrate with, illustrate with examples and tests. Step four, we'll take inventory of our inputs and outputs. Step five, we'll implement the function or functions we need to provide the functionality we're after. And step six, we'll confirm that our tests pass as a way of helping convince ourselves that we've done the right thing. Now the problem that I'm going to illustrate this with is the problem of converting fuel prices from pence per liter in the United Kingdom to dollars per gallon in the United States. So we often hear that fuel prices are considerably higher in Europe than they are in the United States, but it's difficult when one learns that fuel in Britain is 135 pence per liter to know what that means. How does that convert to dollars per gallon in the United States? Is it a little higher? Is it a lot higher? So we're going to write a function that solves that problem. And we're going to do it by following these design principles. So let's start at the top. So the first thing is we want to say something about how we're going to represent information as data. Now that's actually fairly tricky in this case because units matter a ton in this problem. In fact, units are almost the entire problem. It really comes down to unit conversion uh, to solve the problem. So we need to be particularly careful about how we're representing our units. So we're going to represent a variety of quantities having different units, all using basic numbers. This means we'll need to be exceptionally careful Uh, about labeling the units of our values. So that's probably a longer statement of representation of data, and, and in fact a fairly vague one, because it doesn't say anything about the specific units. Um, uh, but it's a reminder that it's going to be an issue throughout the process that we're going through. So now we need a signature, a purpose statement, and a function header. So our signature is going to tell us what our input is and what our output is. And so our input is going to be, we're going to have a number, which is the price, pence per liter, so the UK price. And we're going to get back a number, which is going to be dollars per gallon. Okay, And we will clarify in our purpose statement what those numbers, and in particular what their units are going to be. So... Uh, the function convert PPL to dollars per gallon will convert the input PPL price in pence per liter to the output price in US dollars per gallon. Oh. So we're saying here that the input will be a variable PPL price and it will represent pence per liter and we will convert that to an output price which will be the number we get back and it's going to be in the units dollars per gallon. And so now our function header is just a defined statement. Oops, 
accepts the argument. Um, convert PPL to dollars per gallon PPL price. And it's just a function with a bogus body. So we'll say the answer is always zero. That gas is zero dollars per gallon. That's clearly not right. And we'll have tests that will fail because of that. And then we will go back and actually provide a meaningful body here. The main thing we're after is to ensure that we have an understanding and an agreement on what the name of the function is going to be. And that matches the name provided here in the purpose statement. And the name, the number of arguments, the names of the arguments, and any other information about them, such as the fact that this is in pence per liter, um, in the arguments. So that we have to agree really on this part so that we're all on the same page there. The body is really just whatever is the simplest value you can think of that has the right type. So we're supposed to get a number. Zero is a pretty straightforward number. And that lets us move forward. So now we want to have some illustrate with some examples or tests. Um, now this is not entirely trivial because most of us can't convert pence per liter to dollars per gallon in our head. If we could, we wouldn't be writing this function. So we're going to have to actually do a little homework here to reach a point where we can actually provide a couple of reasonable examples. So one of the things we're going to need to be able to do is convert uh, from pence to dollars. And another thing we have to be able to do is convert from liters to gallons. So I did a little homework. And uh, a re reasonably recent exchange rate has one U.S. dollar, oops, one U.S. dollar, ah, is 0.62542 Great British Pounds. And there's 100 pence in a pound, so that's actually 62.542 pence. So that's one important piece of conversion that we're going to need. And another is that one liter is 0.2642 U.S. gallons. And so we'll need those two conversions to get from pence per liter to dollars per gallon. And what's that going to look like? Well, to get from pence per liter to dollars per liter, we're going to need to convert pence to liter. So if we multiply by the fact that one dollar is the same as 62.542 pence, and notice this isn't racket, this is kind of standard math notation, um, that's going to give us dollars per liter. And that's useful because that tells us that if we take this and we divide by 62.542, we'll get dollars per liter. And we also have that dollars per liter times one liter over 0.2642 gallons gives us dollars per gallon, which is where we're headed. So we can do this calculation in two steps. First by multiplying by this, which is essentially dividing by 62.542, and then by multiplying by this, which is essentially dividing by 0.2642, uh, and that will give us dollars per gallon. So now we can actually use this to generate a couple of examples. Um, and notice that actually documenting these kinds of values is pretty useful. Some of these are constant. This is essentially a constant, right? Liters and the definition of liters and gallons don't change. This, however, is not constant. This changes daily, hourly, minutely. Um, and so if you're going to embed something like an exchange rate in a program, having that documented and actually having that be a named constant is particularly important so that you can come back and change it later. So given these values, we can write a simple check expect test. And what we're going to do is notice that we divide by 62 and change, and we divide by 0.2 and change, which means if we start with a PPL price that is 62 times 0.26, we 
after dividing by the, both of those, we should get a value that is a dollar. So we should be able to say, convert PPL to dollars, product of 62.542 and 0.2642, that if we convert that product, we ought to get a dollar. Okay? And that gives us a simple test. Turns out there's going to be a problem in that this is unlikely to be exactly one, and check expect is going to check for an exact equality. So we're going to have to come back in a little while and replace that with another function called check within. But for the moment, we're going to leave it alone as check expect. Now, if this converts to one, presumably this is all linear. So if we do twice this, we ought to get two. Um, if we, as an edge case, if gas is free in pence per liters, then it ought to be free in dollars per gallon. So we should get zero back again. Um, and uh, we could do one other test just for fun. We say check, expect convert PPL to dollars and if we say it should be um, if we start with say a hundred pence per liter and we divide a hundred by sixty two point five four two and then we divide that in turn by oh point two six four two boom we get something like that so if we start with 100 pence per liter we should get and this is a nice indication of how this really isn't going to be an exact value we're going to have to do something like check within um, well, let's say 0.52 as an approximation of the number we got down below so there's a handful of tests that should give us a sense of whether we're doing the right thing okay so now we've completed Step three, we've illustrated what we're doing with a set of examples or tests. In this case, automatically runnable tests, which will always be pre preferred over just examples. Now we have to take an inventory of inputs and outputs. We've essentially done that up here. This represents information about what are we getting. We're getting pence per liter. And what do we need to return, which is dollars per gallon. And having worked through what are the main constants we need, and the essential logic that we're going to have to work through uh, to solve the problem. So I will actually take step four as being done. Now we need to implement the function. Huzzah! So the first thing I'm going to do here is actually I'm going to peel out some of these uh, constants and give them names because I think we're really going to be a lot better off if we've got names for some of these. So I'm going to say define pence per dollar is 62.542. I'm going to make a note that this is based on exchange rates taken or found online on 17 September 2012. So that it's clear uh, that these are not, that's not a fixed value, but that's a floating value. Um, and in the name, I've sort of indicated what the units are for this number. So one of the nice things about providing a name here is instead of just a floating number, I now have the value and the unit sort of embedded in that constant. Now I also need um, gallons per liter. So I'm going to define uh, gallons per liter. And that value was 0.2642, or an approximation of it. Um, so that gives us that number. And then I think we're ready to go. So now we're ready to go using this logic that we worked out down here. So we need to take the PPL price, and we need to divide PPL price by 62.542, 
and then we need to divide that again by 0 0.2642 and that should give us what we want. So this division is converting pence per liter into dollars per liter and then this outer division is converting dollars per, li per liter into dollars per gallon and that hopefully will completely implement our function. So let's save our work and run and see what happens with our tests. And I have the name wrong. It's dollars per gallon, and I ended at dollars. So I have to fix that in all of these spots. That was silly. Oop, undo. Oop, there we go. Try again. Now, one of our four tests failed. Actually, only one, which is fewer than I expected. Um, and the problem is this last one. So if we come down here, the actual value was 6.051951, da 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 And I had rounded that off to this. Um, so in fact, these two passed, which is slightly surprising. I didn't expect them to actually pass. Um, but it turned out that it was able to do the math sufficiently exactly that we got the right values here. So uh, the trick in general, though, is when you've got a number like this, you're never going to get exactly the right value. You're always going to have an approximation. So how do, we conf how do we do a test where the expected value and the actual value aren't ever going to be exactly equal? turns out that Racket has a check within which is like check expect and it has the actual value, the expected value, but it takes a third argument which is how close do you have to be. So if I say that we have to be within 0.01 then that should be more than enough because this is actually correct to within you know 0 0.0001 so this should be more than enough for us to match. Um, and so this is just how far away can you be, how, how big can the difference be between the actual and the expected for this to still pass. So if we run that, let's close this, and run our, save, and run our tests again, all four tests pass. And so we have in fact confirmed that the test passed and completed the final step. Now one other thing we should do is it's probably good to verify that the numbers make some logical sense. So I looked up recent prices in the UK um, and let's ex uh, convert those to dollars per gallon and make sure they're not just like insane values because you know maybe we got something wrong and because the same logic underpinned our tests that underpinned our implementation if there's a problem with this logic, it's going to make everything wrong. So it's really a good idea to verify, uh, do a sanity check, and make sure that things look reasonable. So I found that the pence, the price in the UK in August uh, was averaging something like 135.5 pence per liter. So let's see what that is in dollars per gallon. And that turns out to be about 8.2 or $8.20 a gallon. And that seems about right. Um, based on my uh, memory of, of gas prices in the UK and gas prices in the United States. So that seems fairly plausible as an amount. It's clearly larger than in the United States. Um, current gas prices around here are running in the vicinity of $4 a gallon. So that's over twice as expensive as it is in the US. Okay, that wraps it up. Hopefully this will have provided a useful example of how we go through the design steps in implementing a function. So we saw that we articulated how we wished to represent numbers and in this case we had to be very careful about units. We had to write down a signature. We had to write down a purpose statement. We wrote a function header which included a, an initially bogus body which we eventually removed. That bogus body you could think of as sort of like scaffolding in a building. It needs to be there while we're completing the work. But when we're done, we take it away and we replace it with the good stuff. So the scaffolding gets replaced by a wall, for example. And so our scaffolding was once a zero here, and now it's a piece of logic that does something useful.
We illustrate with tests or examples. We always prefer runnable tests if possible. In this case, we needed to use check within because we were doing tests on inexact values. We really should go back and probably change these to check within as well. Um, we took inventory of our inputs and outputs. We also made some notes about different parts of the calculation and logic that we were going to need to follow. So we made sure we understood what we were doing. These also proved useful in generating the tests. And then we implemented our function, confirmed the tests were passed, and we did a sanity check and made sure that current gas prices in Britain converted to something that seemed plausible. In this case, 135 and a half pence per liter converted to eight dollars and twenty cents a gallon and change, which seemed reasonable. If we'd gotten something like a negative number or three thousand dollars per gallon, we would have known we'd probably made a mistake somewhere. So thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Bye bye.